Hey everyone, welcome to Bow Making Monday. I am Ashley Greenwood from Three Little Greenwoods Creations. Welcome to my wreath workshop. Today we are gonna be making at least three bows. I'm gonna be sharing some brand new ribbon with you guys, two of my new favorites, and we're just gonna hang out this morning. So come on in and let me know where you are watching from. I always love to see where everyone is. I am in my home in South Carolina. I am a school teacher, a kindergarten teacher, turned wreath maker, turned small business owner, and now I am sharing my love of wreath making with all of you. And I'm combining it with my teaching because I still kind of miss teaching just a little bit. Good morning, Scotland. Welcome to the wreath workshop. I'm so glad you're hanging out with me today. So let's start by me sharing two of my new favorites. Now I'm not gonna be using these today. I'll tell you why in just a minute. Um, but I wanted to share them with you. They're brand new. I just got them from Craft Outlet. If you wanna know where I love to shop for ribbons and other floral things, I have a list for you. It's in the link in my profile. Good morning. So here's my first new love. That is gorgeous. Look at the colors. It just makes me incredibly happy. This is a one and a half inch wired ribbon. So if I was pairing ribbons with this, I would definitely choose an orange and a limey green, um, maybe a black and white buffalo check. That would be really pretty or a gingham. Mm. I always choose an inspiration piece and then I pull colors from the inspiration piece to make a beautiful bow with. So I can't wait to use it. So here's why I can't use it today, okay? So last Monday, our puppy had her little surgery and she's downstairs and she's still in a cone and she's incredibly loud and distracting. So I have both of the dogs like, downstairs, all the doors are shut. I expect to hear a very loud crash very soon. So if we hear a loud crash, we're just gonna ignore it. Let's open this ribbon. This is another ribbon I got from Craft Outlet. Let's see how I like it. It's so pretty, oh my goodness. Look at the colors. I love colorful ribbon. This is a two and a half inch wired ribbon. It is, um, in between a satiny ribbon and a canvas ribbon, it's got really good weight to it. So if I was choosing ribbons to go with that, I would definitely pull out a yellow, a pink, there's blue, I really like the blue. That would be very pretty. But I can't go choose ribbons because if I leave and I go in my ribbon room, which is right next door, the dogs will hear me and she will lose her mind and she's gonna wanna come up here and hang out with us. And y'all, she is so loud. Anybody have a puppy? Like, you know, it's like a baby. It's like having a new baby in the house. So I forgot to pull ribbons to match up with these, but I'll make sure I do it next week. So make sure you follow along. Today we're gonna be making several wreaths. First, we are going to make a patriotic wreath, uh, not a wreath, a bow, bows. We're making a bow using these two, a patriotic wreath, a patriotic wreath bow. Oh yes, your pug, it's like having a baby in it. And then we're gonna make some lemon wreath bows. It's a new design coming up with, new color palette. And then I have, my one and a half inch faux burlap. We're gonna make some small bows with that. So let's get started with the lemon. I'm feeling the lemon today. I have an easy bow maker. This is what I use to make all the bows in my wreath workshop. You can find this tool along with the bind wire that everyone loves. It's in my Amazon storefront. Check it out. So let's get started. Here are my three ribbons. We're going with a lemon theme. I've got a two and a half inch, one and a half inch, and if you've been watching me for long, you know my love-hate relationship with this ribbon. This is also a one and a half inch. They are all wired, all wired. Um, one came from Sam's, 
and the other two came from I have no idea but you can find all the places that I shop for ribbon in the link in my profile well, let's get started I love to combine ribbon widths different ribbon widths and different ribbon patterns together because it just makes a prettier bow. What is everybody doing this Monday morning? Tell me what's going on. All the children are at school. I just have the dogs at home with me. I'm hoping they're not going to tear the house up. This is really cute. So this came from Sam's. Um, it is very thin. Sometimes Sam's has good ribbon. Sometimes not so much. It's pretty thin. It is what we call a directional ribbon. That means it has got a definite right side up. So we're gonna kind of work around that a little bit. How do I pick different color ribbons for bows? Yours always look amazing. Well, thank you so much. The, what I do is I just choose a focal ribbon. So let's say this is my focal, right? I'm gonna put colors out of here and then I'm gonna play with patterns like a gingham and just some more ribbons okay i usually have like a stripe and a solid but i just pulled these three this morning you're working on a new polymer col polymer clay project that sounds so much fun i love creating any kind of creating is really fun there is a lady on tiktok she's an artsy lady she used to teach art in an elementary school, I believe, which is, you know, where I came from. And she makes the prettiest paintings. And it looks super simple. And I want to do that so much. Maybe this weekend I'll set time aside to do that. You're working on your granny squares. That's quilt. Um, granny squares. Is that crochet? Right? Let me know. So let's get started with the two and a half inch wired ribbon it's kind of a satiny it's pretty thin wire is not very great here's how i can tell that the wire isn't very great when i crumble it up it doesn't have much to it but i like the pattern so i'm going to use it anyway do you love her i love her too i think her name is adrian i think adrian you are crocheting and you want to use the squares for a bag i come from a very long line of very crafty women and men. My grandmother crocheted, my great aunts quilted. I got a double dose of craftiness from both sides. I'm gonna angle the camera down just a little bit so you get a better view of what I am doing. And I can still see your comments. Here we go. Easy bow maker, best tool ever. Um, I cannot make bows by hand because of a little bit of carpal tunnel. I just can't hold it all in my grasp for a really long time. All right, let's make a large round bow with all of these pretty patterns. So I'm gonna come in with my two and a half inch and I'm going to make my tail. So this is my tail. This is the first piece that I'm making. And it's going to go all the way out to the seven inch mark on my Easy Bow Maker. This has a ruler on it. Another reason I love it. I'm going to twist my ribbon completely over until all I see is the back of the ribbon. Measure out my loop to six inches. Notice I am holding down pressure in the middle the entire time that I'm working. All right. Hey, Becky. I, I don't want to let up any of the pressure because the bow might pop out or at least it's going to get a little out of whack. So let's twist this side completely over and push down. Let's do another six inch bow. Pushing down in the middle and then twisting that ribbon completely over. When I twist, I twist it away from me. Pushing down, let's do another six inch bow. Pushing it down, twisting it over. Lemons are really popular. 
Um, I really like the look of lemons. I've said before, I am a really colorful, I'm a colorful kind of girl. I like, I decorate with color in our home. Um, I dress colorfully most of the time. And I have a great itch to redecorate something. Pushing it down, I'm gonna cut my tail. So I don't know if I'm gonna like redo the kitchen or maybe just a bathroom. I should probably start with the bathroom. Do you ever get those itches? Or you just wanna do something different or you want something different in your home? That's how I'm feeling right now. Okay, so I want you to notice what I did. This side has three six inch loops. This side has two six inch loops with seven inch tails. I, this is kind of a thin ribbon, but it's the background to everything and it's gonna hold everything up. So I just wanted more loops on the base. Ooh, you just redid your kitchen, Lynn. Tell us about it. Like, did you, like, redecorate or did you redesign your kitchen as in construction work? That's a big difference, right? Not gonna be doing any construction work, but I think I need to, I think I need to do something a little different. Or maybe the living room. Okay, here we go. There is my vase. Yes, your husband and you both want to completely remodel the house. I think what prompted this is my husband and I went to a really nice dinner at a new restaurant in our hometown and it's in a strip mall, right? So I didn't have any great expectations of what it was supposed to be. We heard really good things, but it was so beautifully decorated on the inside. Oh my gosh. So this is my Nemesis ribbon, okay? It's so cute. I love the color. I love the pattern. I love the black and white checks or dashes on the edges. It is incredibly thin with a very thin wire. I, I bought a 50 yard roll and I didn't just buy a 50 yard roll in the green. I bought it in green, yellow, red, and blue. All the colors before I even knew. So, there's that. So, but I want to use it. It's just the real thin. It's really thin. So, I'm going to put this on the base of it to hold this ribbon up a little bit. And then I'm actually going to put another layer of lemon ribbon on top of it to maybe help it out a little bit. Okay, let's get some of this ribbon pulled out and straight. Sometimes I drop my ribbons on the floor. Today, I'm just gonna put them on the side with me. So I always begin with a knife's edge. That's just a straight across cut because it's easy and it's quick. And that's just how I like to do it. If you wanna do a dovetail, that's totally great. They're beautiful. I just do it this way, okay? All right, so one more thing before I blow y'all's minds. Do you notice how the tails are on? This is my left side, okay? This is my left side. I hope it is your left side as well. Here are the tails. I always begin my bows with my tails on my left hand side and I don't want to have to do it backwards. So instead of starting on the right hand side and do it backwards for me, I just spin my bow maker around. Okay. Every time I do that, people are like, what is she doing? It's just easier for me to start on my left hand side. If I were to start on the right, it would feel backwards to me. Okay, so we're coming in with a six inch tail. Let's make that a little bit longer, six inches. I'm gonna twist it completely over. Now this ribbon is very similar on the front and on the back. And some people would say that you don't really have to twist, but I think that you do because it makes a prettier loop when you twist your ribbon. 
Lynn says that her kitchen was dark wood and you painted your cabinets white. Ooh, did you paint them? Or did you hire somebody to do it? And if you did it, how, how hard was that process? I would love to know. You also refinished a kitchen table and chairs to match. I have painted kitchen kitchen tables and chairs and it's still holding up pretty good. I was very pleased. It was black and I wanted white, so I painted it. Flipping the boat is genius. Hey, Claudia, you need to use that. Isn't it though? Because you're not having to work backwards. I got enough going on besides making my brain um, have to switch stuff around. You know what I'm saying? It took a month in total, but it was so much fun. <laughs> hey, Kelly. Good morning. You've got these glasses in your Zenny cart. I have, so I can't see, y'all, seriously. These are bifocals. I have never been able to see very well. I'm going to do three on this side. And, um, hold on. Um, I've never been able to see really well. And now I have bifocals. So, there's that. And in my Zenny cart, which is an online eyeglass place, really good prices, if you didn't know. Zenny, Z-E-N-N-I. I have a pair of sunglasses, like prescription sunglasses. Oh, shoot. Okay, let's try this again with sharper scissors. There we go. See, this ribbon is so thin. It just didn't cut super well. Um, anyway, I have prescription sunglasses in my cart. I haven't bought them yet, but I need to. What color comp? That color combo is so cute. Thank you, Jane. What does the writing say? It says, hello. I'll show it up close in just a minute. Someone says, I went from 80s wood cabinets to painting them gray. Ooh, I bet that's really pretty. Notice how I am moving my loops to where I want them. Kelly's got sunglasses too. I'm going to order I'm going to order them today. Because... I have turned into my grandmother whenever I have glasses on and the sun is shining really bright. My eyes are really blue and they're sensitive to sun. So I have those old lady clip-ons. Totally not attractive. At all. So here's my second layer. I did the same pattern. I have three loops on one side, two loops on the other. That's really Okay, now we're going to come in with our last layer of lemon ribbons. Lemon ribbon. This is one and a half inch wire. This is really good ribbon. It is very thick. Um, it's got good wire in it. It's good stuff. I really like this. This is a 50 yard roll. I have no idea where I got it from because I forgot to write any of the information on here like I'm supposed to be doing. But if you want to know where I buy ribbon, there is a instant download link in my profile, so go check that out. Okay, I'm going to spin it around again because you know I like to start on my left-hand side. I'm coming in with this one and a half inch wired ribbon and I'm getting a little, excuse me, I'm getting a little smaller as I go in. Not a lot smaller, just a little bit. And put it down in here. Twist that ribbon completely over. <clears throat> now, when I was teaching kindergarten, a lot of those sweet little babies, some of them would get hung up on making sure that <clears throat> their artwork, their whatever they were working on was perfect. And I used to always tell them that perfect is too hard we just try the best that we can. So I want you to I want to encourage you to don't get hung up on things being perfect. Just try the best that you can, okay? A lot of times that stops us from being creative and having fun. 
We just do the best that we can and we learn as we go. You have to do something to learn something. Words of wisdom from the day. So on this top layer, I only did two loops on one side and one loop on the other. That is so cute, I love it. I'm gonna press down in the middle, pull my loops to where I want them. When you move your loops to where you want them, it's just easier to pull it out. It's just, it's like they're already in place because when I tighten everything down, they're not moving. And I don't wanna have to fight with it. Good morning, Morgan. I'm so glad you're here. Super cute. Now let's finish it off. I'm gonna need bind wire. It's in my Amazon storefront. I love this stuff. One of my wreath besties turned me on to it. It's just wire covered in paper. It's amazing. And you can cut it any length that you want. But if you don't have bind wire, don't let that stop you. Just go get some pipe cleaners, okay? Pipe, I use these for years. Just go get pipe cleaners. Don't let it stop you. You're also going to need some zip ties. These are 8-inch zip ties. Everything is linked in my Amazon storefront just so you can go and look and see what I'm talking about, okay? Do I have a video of me making bows? I am so glad you asked. Yes, I have a free bow tutorial using an easy bow maker. It, the link is in my profile. Please go check it out. You didn't know bind wire came in different colors? Hey, Angela, I see you're a wreath girl too. Lots of different colors. This is two millimeter and it's coming unraveled. Okay, let's cut this off. I like to do them between 14 inch, 16 inch. Good pliers or wire cutters. Okay, these came from the Home Improvement Store. Those cutesy ones that they have at Hobby Lobby or Michaels or wherever, um, they're not for us. They're not for us, we need heavy duty. <laughs> Your mind is blown. You are so welcome. Angela, tell me, what kind of reeds do you make? What's your favorite kind? I always love chatting up with new, with other wreath makers. Okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to slide it underneath all of this. All of these loopies. Angela says she makes great vine. Me too. That's my favorite. Honestly, I never learned how to make Deco mesh. Deco mesh is fun. It's a vibrant. People talk about how easy it is to make. I don't know how to do it. I'm just, I'm staying in my lane, you know. Let's take these and I'm going to slide it up under here. going to pull the buckle up. Notice I am holding my thumb down on all of this ribbon as I am working. Y'all, the dogs must be taking a nap. I don't even hear them playing downstairs. Tighten it up about halfway. You've been waiting to start making wreaths. Your Pinterest is covered with wreaths right now. Listen, Katie, if you go to my Etsy shop, I have so many tutorials that you can download. The ones in it, the tutorials in an in my Etsy shop have like a written tutorial and all of the supplies that you would need. But you can also check out my YouTube channel because I've got read tutorials on there too. Okay, I'm popping it up. Um, Jeep Life 1974 says, my bows are not that great and everyone wants you to pay for them to teach you. Yeah, I know, but you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Okay, I'm going to push this right here. Pull, pull, just like that. And turn it off. Okay, so here's what I did. I've got my bind wire in the back. I've got my zip tie. I tightened it down as tight as I could get it because it's gonna make it pop. Ooh, someone says they love doing deco mesh reeds. That's fun. It's just, I just never taught myself how to do it. 
All right, here we go. We're gonna give it a little twisty twist in the back. Make sure it's nice and tight. It's not going anywhere. What is the green wire I am using? It is called bind wire. I hope that you guys can tell what that is or how I say it, B-I-N-D, bind. Sometimes my southern accent kind of messes, messes stuff up. Okay, let's move this all around. Being really gentle with this gingham. It's super thin. It is going to fray a lot if I'm not careful. Well, thank you so much. She says, I am so sweet, and she loves how honest and straightforward I am. Well, I appreciate you saying that. Some people say I talk too much. And some people say that my voice is so calming it puts them to sleep. I don't know how I feel about that. Oh, Becky, you are so sweet. She says, I am a great teacher and you love watching me. You have also purchased my workshops and you love them. Thank you so much, Becky. Yeah, this is really cute. That's adorable. The um, bind wire gauge is 22 millimeters. Love it. What is my Etsy shop name? Um, you can get a direct link by clicking on my little picture. It's either here or here. Going to my homepage, clicking on the link. Everybody knows where the link is, right? Um, and it will have a drop down menu that you can just click. Easy peasy. Thank you so much. I love it. You can tell that I used to teach. Yeah. Taught for a really, really long time. Amy says, I am so relaxing to watch. I'm a bright spot in your day. That is so sweet. I'm telling my children. They will not be impressed, but I'm still telling my children. Oh, Claudia. Claudia says she talks about me all the time. You were finally able to make bows from watching me. That is amazing. Thank you, Claudia. I appreciate that. You can't do them bows. Yes, you can. You just got to get my free tutorial. You might need a board. Listen, I couldn't, I, I couldn't do it without this thing right here. Okay. This is how I have a successful Etsy shop. I make bows on this little gadget. Best place to purchase grapevine wreaths. I was just purchasing some today, so let's talk about it. Um, the best place. So I really like Michael's um, bulk buy purchasing. So I don't know if you have to have a business license to purchase from them. I don't think so. Anyway, so I've been buying my wreaths from Michael's, but it is very touch and go. You know, sometimes they're great. Sometimes they are just not good reads at all. And I have to use spray foam in them to get stuff to stick. But I checked online today and they don't have any in the size that I need. So I started shopping around. And Deco Exchange has really good reads. Uh, my wholesaler, Sims Pottery, has really good reads. But keep in mind, everything has gone up which is really sad. Good morning, Cheryl. I'm so glad you're here today. Have I tried Angel Vine Reads? I, what do you mean? The really thin ones? I have used those before, but not, it's not my preference. My next ADD fixation is hair bows. Oh, you want to make them so bad? Well, start making them, girl. You make your own bow maker. It costs you about $5. That's awesome. You go, girl. Good morning, Camille. Let's get busy. Let's make a patriotic bow using these two ribbons. These are two and a half inch wired ribbon. Uh, they came from Sam's. I love it. Where did I get the Easy Bow Maker? Amazon. You can find all of my bow making tools in the link in my profile. Okay. So I'm having fun mixing up the patterns. We have this really pretty wide plaid. It's like a big plaid and the polka dots. It's gonna be super cute. Let's make a big patriotic wreath though. Because I got smart this year and instead of 
planting real live plants on my front porch. I got some faux and I got red geraniums. It looks so good, y'all. I'm almost ready to push out the um, video tutorial. It's so pretty. Anyway, these are gonna be really pretty on my front porch with all that red. Red is my most favorite color. So let's start. Let's start with this one. Two and a half inch is real thin. That's what you get with Sam's ribbon. The other places, they have really good ribbon, except for that gingham that aggravates me. So pretty. Yeah, make sure you're following along, guys, because I'm gonna release the um, the DIY summer planter tutorial as soon as I can get it ready. Have I fixed your planter boxes? Yes, I did that this weekend. Oh, you got your Etsy shop back, Jess. That's awesome. Okay, let's start with a diagonal cut. Just like this. And let's make a big one. All right, I'm gonna pull it towards me and I'm gonna make my tails go forward so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, okay, this is 16 inches. I'm gonna do a 16 inch tail. 16 inches, pulling it down straight, I'm gonna flip it over, let's measure out six inches, pushing it down, flipping it over, so this ribbon is basically the same on both sides, but I am telling you you need to twist your ribbon. As you are putting it into the dowels, you need to twist your ribbon. Yes, Jess, you can get some of my tutorials now. I'm so happy. Where did I get the board? Um, this one came from my grandmother, but you can purchase them from Amazon. People say that they have them at Michael's. I am not sure about that. I do know Deco Exchange has them, so you could also get them, get one from there. Push it down. Another six inches loop. Push it down. All right, now I'm going to pull this down forward and use my first tail to cut my second one. I'm just going to use it as a measurement. It's going to be right about there. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. Perfect is too hard. We're just having fun being creative. Let's move these to where they need to go. Just like that. So I made like a little X. So pretty. Isn't this it's such a graphic print. I think that is why plaid and buffalo check is so trendy because it is graphic, it pops, it has white in it so it really pops because I want people to see my stuff from the street. If I'm gonna hang a wreath on my front door or whatever I'm doing, I want people to see it. Good morning, Lorena. Good morning, Caitlin. You haven't been seeing the lives, Becky, so I, Last week, my son's puppy had her surgery, and it was on Monday. And then he and I went to the grocery store, cause you know, he's poor, and bought way too much stuff. So I didn't, I wasn't able to go live on Monday, making booze, so I apologize for that, guys. Okay, another 16 inch, putting it down in my, in between the dowels on my Easy Bow Maker, smushing it down. I'm gonna pull my tail forward. Caitlin says she loves this. Karen says she loves this. Well, thank you guys. Please make sure you are following along. And if you guys like tap, tap, tap the heart button here on TikTok, it shoots this video out to more people who would really enjoy to learn about reeds and bows, so I would really appreciate that. Okay, let's do it again. 
six inch loops. Pushing it down and flipping that ribbon completely over. I really love this polka dot. It makes me super happy. Red is my most favorite color. Our front door is red, which kind of limits what I can put on it, to be honest. Because not every flower, not every wreath is gonna look fantastic on a red front door. I'm gonna do two of these loops on each side. I almost grabbed a third ribbon, but I was like, no, I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna let it go. You love the dots too, me too. Polka dots make me happy. I am a color girl, like so seriously. I love, you know, we all love those home improvements, home improvement shows, right? Especially the ones where everything is all white and crisp and clean, but that's just not me. I like color. Our kitchen has roosters in it, colorful roosters. Okay, we pull these to where I want them to go. Holding down in the middle as I tug them around, okay? Jess says her front door is white, but you kind of wish you had a black or navy blue one. Everything pops against it. Get you some paint. Paint it. Easy peasy. Did I get my outside planters done? I did, Debbie. I have one left, and I think I'm going to go live on Facebook. Facebook later this week and do it live. Even though there's it's, it doesn't take me that long. I think I'm going to do it anyway. This may have been asked, so I'm sorry if it has. Where's the best place to get ribbon? There is a list of where you can shop for ribbon online. You don't have to have a resale license. It's in my profile. So click that link and it's going to pop up and you just click that little box. Put in your email address because I'm going to send it to your email and boom, there you go. Your doors are black and you can see, you can use almost anything Yeah, I know. What's keeping the bow down? It's been twisted in the middle so it stays pretty tight. That's what's holding it down, okay? Here we go. I love it. Alright, next I'm going to come back in with the plaid. I'm going to put another layer of plaid on it. I am making a big patriotic wreath bow, or patriotic bow. These can be used anywhere. You can put them on your mailboxes. You can put them on either side of your front door. You can put them on a big wreath. Super cute. All right, let's come in again with this. I'm going to measure me a big long tail again, pushing it down in the middle. Pull this forward, twist it. Sometimes I have to lift it up a little bit to twist it over. Twisting it over. Okay, let's do another loop. And I'm gonna come in just a little bit. Push it down. Now, check this out. I'm going to pull this one forward to me, actually, and then I'm going to cut a small tail. You want to learn how to make bows? Please, can you do a video that is very slow? There is a free bow making tutorial in the link in my profile. I'd love for you to go check it out. How long are my tails? They're 16 inches. They're real long. Really, really long. Okay, so I'm going to cut right there. Okay. Now, let's grab my bike wire. So this is a really long, this is a large bow, and I don't ever know when people are go, where people are gonna put these. So I love the bind wire because I can cut it however long I want. If you get, if you purchase one of my tutorials from my Etsy shop, I go real slow. Like with the camera, like, on top of me. But this is Bow Making Monday, and I'm just kind of sitting and chatting. 
I'm teaching, but I'm not going super slow. So I would encourage you to hop over to my Etsy shop and look at my tutorials and see if there is something that you would love to make. Eight inch zip tie. These are my most favorite. They're not too, they're just right. They're like Goldilocks. They're not too thin. They're not too thick. These are the ones I love. Amazon. Okay. Slide that up underneath. Holding pressure the whole time, okay? I don't want anything to move. I'm gonna pop that out. It's too cute. Thank you guys for sharing this video. It helps more people to see it. I really appreciate that. That is a big bow, y'all. Okay, let me see on the back side. Line up my bind wire, make sure it's even. You know, one side is not super long, one side is not super, super short. Flip it back over. I'm gonna take my buckle of my zip tie and move it in the back. So this is like my little button. It's like my little button loop in the middle, okay? I put my thumb in the middle of it. And I'm just squeezing everything together without shifting the loops. I don't want to I don't want to move the loops around. This takes practice, but you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Okay, and we're going to tighten it down. Really, 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 really tight. Goodness. Cut that zip tie off as close as you can with the flat edge of your wire cutters. I think these are actually called pliers. I call them wire cutters. And you shimmy this up just a little bit. Twist my ribbon. Okay. Oh, that's so pretty. All right, I'm, I'm gonna have to back up so you guys can see it. Check that out. Oh my goodness. How fun would that be for summer? I think I'm gonna make some of these for my front porch. Now, because I moved all the loops around, they're in the right place. That is so pretty, y'all. Adorable. Oh my goodness. I love it. Let's make a small one. Let's make a round one. Let's make a small round one using these ribbons because that would be so pretty. You could put, so listen, on my front porch, I have these fakey fake tor to topiary trees. They're fake. I got them off of Amazon. But wouldn't this be pretty like on on top of those trees with some little um, little white lights on them? I think I'm gonna do that. You are a crafter but you can't seem to make a simple bow. Any one of these. For reals. Super cute. Where did I get the red ribbon? This ribbon came from Sam's in the summer. So Sam's releases ribbon twice a year. Now you can find ribbon that looks a lot like this at Craft Outlet, Deco Exchange, Greenery Market, um, Khalees. You can find ribbon. Just search for red polka dot ribbon and red, white, and blue plaid ribbon, okay? Sam's releases ribbon twice a year. They release their spring collection in like January. They release their Christmas collection in August. So just be on the lookout, heads up, okay? Super cute. Let's see if I miss anything. I love the polka dot ribbon too, it makes me happy. Okay, let's do another one. Let's make another one of these. We're going to use the same ribbons. Do I seal the edges? I do not. I do not seal the edges. You have a ton of their spring ribbon. They had some really cute stuff. I 
All right, let's go in again with this patriotic red, white, and blue plaid. We're gonna make a round one, and I'm gonna I'm going to choose to make a smaller bow. Now my bows are not ever really small. Okay, they're really not. But we're gonna make a smaller one. Let's do. I'm gonna try to make an eight inch one. That means it'll have four inch loops. So let's, I'm gonna slide the ribbon in between the dowels. Twist it completely over. I twist away from me. Thank you very much, shenanigans. Do I sell the bows? I do sell the bows. You can go and look. Now this one isn't listed yet. If you really want this one, send me a, go to my Etsy shop and send me a message. That's the easiest way. Hey, my friend, Tammy. If you want these bows, um, you can send me a direct message here on TikTok. Or if you go to my Etsy shop, that's easier for me to keep track of. You can send me a message over there as well. But I have an Etsy shop full of bows, guys. Okay, four inch. This is gonna be a little one. It's still gonna be so cute. Twist it over. Tammy, I was able to go live this morning. I have locked the dogs downstairs. They must be asleep. I haven't heard any crashes. The puppy had to have her surgery and she's in a cone, which is trying to take out our um, knees every time she runs past us at a high rate of speed. And she's very noisy, so that's why she's downstairs. Okay, I'm being really careful and making smaller loops. Okay, let's cut this tail. Perfect. Let's move them where we want them to be. That's cute right there. I mean, I could stop right here. That would be adorable. Hey guys, thanks for the little um, glitter badges and the roses. I appreciate that. And thank you so much for sharing this video. It helps more people to see it. So here we go. So I have four inch loops. Super cute. I could totally stop. That would be perfect. But I'm not stopping. I'm going to come in with my two and a half inch red and white polka dot because it makes me happy. I'm going to spin my easy bow maker around because I like to start on the left hand side. It just makes my heart happy so I don't have to do things backwards. Thanks Becky for sharing the video and thanks for following me guys. I appreciate it. Okay, let's get a length of this stretched out. This is actually Christmas ribbon. The name of my Etsy shop is Three Little Greenwoods. The number three, the word little, and the word greenwoods. A long time ago, I took a couple of years off of teaching to be a stay-at-home mama, and I started a blog talking about, oh, I thought they were all falling over. I started a blog about DIYing things around the house and the children's birthday parties. I have now turned that blog into a wreath making blog, but I kept the name Three Little Green Ones. Yes, on that bottom layer, there are only three loops and two tails. Some people call that a funky bow. It's just cute. It's going to make a cute bow, I promise. <clears throat> I'm doing the same pattern. I'm doing four inch loops, twisting that ribbon over, pushing it down, smushing it. We say smushing in the South. I don't know if you guys say that or not. You remember my blog? Stop it. That's crazy. I've, I've had that blog for 10 years. 10 years. So 10 years ago, I got to be a stay-at-home mama for a couple of years when the children were really little. And then I started teaching preschool. And I taught preschool for seven years. So I loved teaching littles. I think preschool and the four-year-olds, they were my favorite because they are just adorable. 
They were so cute and they loved me. Oh my goodness. We used to have so much fun. I loved reading to my little ones. Okay, let me cut this tail. There we go. Let me spread these around. Yes, that is a very small world. And now I'm making I'm making reeds and bows and have a fantastic Etsy shop. So you never know how your life is gonna end up, right? That's so cute. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're gonna come back in with the plaid on top, just like we did with the big bow. So we have plaid, polka dot, plaid on top. Let me get my plaid. After this, we are going to make a couple of small faux burlap bows that I am going to use to make um, lantern swags with. Pushing it down, flip that over. Push, push, push. I'm only doing one loop in the middle because it's gonna be like my little button. My cute little button on the top. That, that's good ribbon. I really like the plaid a lot. Let's cut some bind wire. This is bind wire. It's my favorite thing to use. Cut about a 14 inch, 16 inch length of bind wire. Then slide it up under all of these loops. <clears throat> Eight inch zip tie. You love the funky bows, Becky. They are really cute, aren't they? Push, push, push. So guys, I take these live videos and then I share them over on my Facebook page. So please make sure you are also following me on Facebook. Three Little Green Woods, the number three. And I think I share, I also share tutorials on YouTube, but I always wonder if I should share the bow making tutorials on YouTube. Like, do people really want to see bows making on YouTube? What do you guys think? Okay, let's make sure the bind wire is nice and even. Pulling it to the middle, pulling my zip tie to the back gonna put my thumb in the middle of that little bow. Cheryl says yes. Okay. Jewel says yes. Yes to YouTube, says Tammy. Okay. YouTube people can be kind of hateful. So can Facebook people. So I always like worry about sharing. <laughs> okay, let's tighten up this zip tie. Now once I tighten this down, all of my loops are gonna be in place. That's why I move them where I want them to be. Nice and tight. Twist this around. Twist, twist, twist. There we go. All right, now we're gonna fluff them up. And when I fluff up my loops, I just put my fingers, my two fingers in there and I just kind of wiggle them around. I like big fat bows. Tammy says YouTube is where she learns her mechanical skills. Amen to that. So our, our oldest son is living by himself and um, he is definitely using the school of YouTube to figure all kinds of things out. Look how cute is that? YouTube is great when you need a refresh for the holidays and bow making. I love it. All right, so here we go. 
Y'all, I'm going to have to list these ASAP on the Etsy shop. Gorgeous. How cute is that? I got to make some for my home. I make things all the time. Sometimes I don't decorate with them because I'm too busy making, but these deserve a place on my front porch. Okay, let's make one more wreath. Bow. Bow. Not wreaths. Bows. Let me adjust my mountain of ribbon. So this is one and a half inch wired faux burlap. Okay. Faux burlap. Not for reals. Because real burlap is extraordinarily messy. That stuff sheds like crazy. I need to make 11, 11 of these little bows. I'm not going to make them all with you guys because I don't think you want to sit and watch me make 11 little bows, but um, small lantern swags are really popular in my Etsy shop. People use them to decorate for weddings, anniversary parties, baby showers, and one customer ordered eight. Eight. I love big orders, so I'm here for it. And then another customer ordered three. So I need to make 11 of these little bows. And I'm going to go quick. So while I am making these little bows, do you guys have any questions about wreath making? Go ahead and ask me in the comments. It might be something I can help you with. Okay, let's cut this. This ribbon is very thick. Almost too thick to work with. Okay, now I'm gonna come back on top and put another little layer of bows. Where can you get the bow maker? It is on Amazon. I actually have an Amazon storefront where I've got all of my wreath making tools listed and things that I love. Like I even have started to purchase some greenery and florals from Amazon just to test them out. And I have those in my shop as well. Oh no, your phone froze. Can you show the previous bow completed? Super cute. About how long am I making my beginning loops? Uh, about five inches. So here's my wreath making story when I first started. I've always been extraordinarily crafty. I've made wreaths for our front door for years and wreaths for inside our home. And one day after preschool, I was surfing Facebook. You know how we do. It's our like quiet time before we start our second job. Because does anyone think that being a mama is like having a second job? Because I think it's like a second job. I was watching this lady and she was making wreaths. And I was so intrigued. Where the heck is the end of the bind wire? I was so intrigued of watching her that I started binge watching. And then um, I started investigating more and digging deeper. And then I realized she had this whole business where she was making really good money selling reads on Etsy. And when I saw that and I figured that out, I was like, I am all in because I knew I could do it. So I worked really, really, really hard. And um, here I am. I got myself a business coach early on because I was going in. This is a business. I was going in it to make money and I wanted to make money as quickly as possible. So I didn't waste time. I invested in myself and I got a business coach. Tighten this really, really hard. How many loops were on the small round bow? Mm. Eight, maybe. 
maybe is twist this over. Okay, so one done. Let's see how many of these I can get made before I have to pop off. These are going on little lantern swags. So a lantern swag is simply this little flower arrangement that you put um, on top of a lantern. Did I say business code, business coach? Sorry, it's the Southern in me. What does a business coach do? A business coach gives you a fast track to where you want to be. So when you're looking for a, a mentor, it's almost like a mentor. When you are looking for a mentor, you want to find someone that is where you want to be in the future. And they're going to share with you tips and tricks for how they got there. So you don't like waste your time trying to figure it all out because that is hard. It can be done, like we were talking about earlier. There's the great um, University of YouTube. You can figure stuff out, but if you want to fast track, sometimes you have to um, invest in yourself, and that means hiring a coach or paying for a, a course to teach you how to do something. Sheila asked, this may be personal, but you're not the way the business is booming. It's a good goal. Okay, let me read that again. A monthly income when business is booming is three to four K a month. Is that a good goal? Well, let me ask you this, Sheila. Is the three or four K a month your gross revenue or is that your money? Is that your income? after all the bills are paid. And um, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Profit, profit, right? So your gross revenue is like, you know, say your gross revenue is $10,000, but your expenses were $7,000, then you're only getting 3,000. See what I'm saying? So I want you to think about, you know, how much are you spending? What's your profit? Okay. I hope that answers your question. She says yes. Yes to what, Sheila? Give me more information. So when I first started out for several years, um, you know, I would sell like $1,000 a month, maybe $2,000 a month, and that was a really big deal. I was doing it part-time, but I was also spending a lot of money. So you have to be really careful about how much money you are spending. I encourage people when they're first starting out, don't go out and buy a whole bunch of florals and greenery because you, you may not need all of that. Go out and buy like specific things to make one or two wreaths. And once you've got that wreath made, then you go get some more to buy one or two more. Brianna says she is 17 and you hope to have a floral business. You have one, it's not out there. What is? What do you mean it's not out there? Like you haven't um, published it yet or you haven't like opened your Etsy shop? I only sell on Etsy. Listen, I got so tickled. Misty may be on here, so I have another wreath-making buddy. Her name is Misty. She makes beautiful wreaths. And she tried her hand at a craft fair this weekend, and bless her heart. She said there was a big thunderstorm in the morning, and by the afternoon, it was like hailing and lightning. <laughs> she said her tent blew, or almost blew away, and she said... She sent me a message. She said, I'm done with craft shows. And I, same. Craft shows were never my thing. So I, I only sell on Etsy. I only sell my reads on Etsy. 
Did I create a bunch of inventory before I opened Etsy? Um, I opened my Etsy shop with about five reads. Don't let that stop you, okay? Because, like I said before, you have to do the thing to learn the thing. And start with five reads. By the time you get 20 listed, you will understand more of what you are doing. You'll be taking better pictures. You will be um, writing better listings, doing all the stuff, okay? How many things do I have listed on Etsy? How long did it take me to get that number? Um, currently, I've got like 140 something things listed on Etsy. It took me, oh gosh, I don't know, six months, six months to a year to get up to 100 items on Etsy. And I was learning as I was going and I was changing as I was going. And, you know, like I said, the pictures got better, the description got better, the keywords got better, all the things. Um, what do you use, who do you use for boxes and shipping for reads? So when I first started, I just bought them off of Amazon. I have a whole blog post about how to ship reads. If you send me a direct message, I'll send you the link to the blog post, okay? Shipping is kind of scary. It is. You don't know what the heck you're doing. You just hope you're doing the whole thing. You're doing it all right, and it arrives. Oh my gosh. You hope that you do it the right way and everything arrives great and nothing is damaged, right? So if you want to learn more about shipping, I can send you the link to the blog post that I just wrote, okay? Shipping is very intimidated, but you gotta do the thing to learn to do the thing, right? You just gotta do it. This is an easy bow maker. It's in my Amazon storefront. You're very welcome. <laughs> Rockwood Crabtree. That's a very cute name. What was my largest order? You mean, like, what's the most any any one person has ever ordered from me? Let me think about that. A couple of weeks ago, I had this one lady. She ordered three of my best-selling reads. And I did actually did a whole TikTok about how I shipped those three boxes. You can't get any traffic in your Etsy shop and you are not a social media person. Actually, you don't have to be a social media person to sell on Etsy. You just have to understand how to put the correct titles and keywords in your listing. It is all about SEO, which is search engine optimization. I have a business coach I can recommend. If you send me a direct message, I will share that information with you, okay? Okay, my friends that are asking, can I send it to you, please? You gotta send me a message because once, once this awesome live is over, all of your comments go poof, and I can't find them again. They're like all gone. Someone is asking, where did I get the bow making board amazon it's in my amazon storefront you're definitely getting an easy bow maker you totally should it's so much easier seriously do i have multiple workstations or just one and how important is organization um so i have two rooms in our home i'm in the home we had a guest bedroom that I totally took over. I am in the guest bedroom currently. This is where this is where my work table is. It's where my tower of flowers is. But I started in the um I started in the room over our garage. And then I outgrew it. So that room over there is filled with greenery, wreaths, my ribbon racks all of that, and I make in this room and store in that room. I hope that makes sense. Where is the best place to send me a message? You can send me a message here on TikTok. Just direct message me. Or if you're watching on Facebook, you can send me a message directly on Facebook. 
how can you find my Amazon storefront? If you go to my homepage here on TikTok, click on that link. We all know where the link is, right? It will take you to what we call a landing page, which has like a whole bunch of little buttons on it. You just click one of those buttons and it'll take you to, you click the button that says Amazon storefront. I hope that makes sense. Oh, you are so, thank you, Sinclair lady, for saying I'm amazingly, amazingly sweet. Do I only use artificial? Yup, because they never die. <laughs> that means I can buy, you know. So at the end of the season, I typically, like we all do, will go and buy supplies for next season, and I just store them. So, yeah, I, I don't have to worry about my inventory getting like dead. So I only use artificial. I hope that answers your question. Let me scroll back and see. Jen says she doesn't have money for a business coach. I get that. Get scrappy. Just get scrappy. Got to do the work. Totally get it. And I have spent money. I've spent a lot of money over the years for people to try to teach me to do something. And I didn't get anything out of it. So there's that. So do the work and you can figure it out, okay? All right, let's see. Find wire, any more questions? I love chit-chatting. The dogs are still asleep downstairs, so I'm thinking I'm good. I haven't heard any crashes yet. If you're just joining, I am making little bows to make lantern swags with. Even when it seems like you don't get something, you get something. That's true. That's very true. But really, don't be afraid. Opening an Etsy shop costs 20 cents to list an item. That's it, 20 cents. And you're gonna get better over time. I have written on my board right there, get great over time. And I wrote that up there years ago. It probably won't come off now. Sassy in Florida says, you are the absolute first person to ever offer advice without sending me to pay a link. <laughs> You're very welcome. But, but I am a business. So some of the things I offer for free and some of the things I offer as a paid tutorial. Cause I gotta make some money to buy more ribbons and to put my kid through college. Can I get an amen for that? He's always needing something, right? Do I do cutesy boxing stuff when I ship a wreath like a card and stuff? Nope. Here's why. Now, let me preface that by saying, when I first started out for every order, for years I did this, right? For every order, I would send a handwritten thank you note. And I really think that helped my business to grow. But then I got way too busy and I didn't have time to do that. So I do not put anything cutesy inside my box. I wish that I had the time to do that, but I don't want to spend the money. I don't really think it's necessary. So I'm sure there are lots of different, different, different opinions about that. I actually have a, um, had a box, a wreath blog post as well. So if you send me a direct message, I can also send you that blog post talks about how to box everything up. I see lots of amens. Mama's four girls has three in college. Oh my goodness. Yeah, amen for real. Okay, you sent me a message on Facebook. That totally works. Does Etsy also take a percent of what you sell? They do. And let me tell you why I'm totally okay with that. So Etsy is a shopping platform, right? People go to Etsy with their credit card in their hand 
looking for something to buy for themselves, give as a gift, whatever, right? I can't bring those people to my standalone website. They're not coming to my website to buy stuff, but they go to Etsy to buy stuff. So Etsy is bringing you traffic. They are bringing you people with their credit card in their hands. So yes, they take a percentage and I am totally okay with that. Sassy in Florida says, I have encouraged her to get to work in your Etsy shop. While you're down for surgery, yeah, girl, it's a great time to do some back-end work. Um, Grace Florals says, you noticed I am twisting your ribbon when it is the same on both sides. Is there a reason for that? Yes, it makes a prettier, loopier bow. And this has like some wire that you can see on the back, and I don't want my customers to see that. But yeah, I always twist my ribbon. Oh my goodness, the only thing you can do is florals because you broke your spine. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I get into it. You can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. You're welcome. I'm glad that that makes sense. I'm assuming you're talking about why we let Etsy take a percentage of our sales. Mm -hmm. For real. So on average, how many sales do I get per week? That is a great question. So in our business, it is very seasonal. It fluctuates a lot. When I say that, I mean, this is a super busy time of year because people are buying for their homes. They're buying things for weddings. They are buying, buying, buying. This is when everybody wants to have a new spring or summer wreath or whatever. In January, not so much. Not so much going on in January. You know, people are just over Christmas. They are not worried. They are not thinking of making their front door look pretty because it's cold outside. Typically in the summer, business goes down because everyone is outside and enjoying themselves outside. They're not really worried about decorating their home. So our business is very cyclical. It has ups and downs. Okay. Right now I am averaging about uh, 15 to 20 orders a week, but this is my very busy time. And my not so very busy time is probably like five to 10, something like that. Your physical boutiques take 30% of your commission. Yeah, I, here's my story about the boutiques. I wanted to sell in our hometown when I first started out and there were some really cute little boutiques, but yes, they wanted a 30% commission because they are, they're bringing customers in just like Etsy. They are paying for a storefront they are paying for advertisement for their store, so I get it. But they also wanted me to price my things super low, which is not the deal. Mm -mm. I gotta get paid. So it just didn't work out for me. I hope it works out for you. Really, I do. Kelly says, everybody broke in January. Everybody's broke in January. For real. Nobody's buying wreaths. In January there are some but not very many where do I get my bind wire Amazon it's in my storefront you can get that by going to the link in my profile that is a lot oh, yeah that's a lot you're taking your stuff out in May I want to start a website or Etsy go for Etsy Starting a website is hard work, really. So that is my two cents on that. Besides, you have to send people to your website. So if you were to start a Shopify store, you have to make sure everybody knows about it. You have to send people there. There are domain fees and all kinds of stuff. Okay, we made four. Let's keep going. Let's see if I can make four more. I have an order for eight lantern swags. I have to make eight of those bows. And then someone else ordered three. 
So yeah, do I have a flat rate on shipping? That is a very good question. Um, so in our world, everyone thinks that shipping is should be free because that's what Amazon has taught us, correct? Shipping is not free. Shipping is included in the price of my wreath. So on my Etsy shop, it says free shipping, but it's, it's in there. It's in there. Nothing is for free. Remember, we are a business. We need to make money to support ourselves, okay? So some people have like a flat, flat $15 um, shipping you know, and if that works for them, that's great. I mean, I, I'm sure I'm assuming that it does. In my mind, the way that I shop is I want shipping to be free. You know, so listen, so think about this, okay? If you're trying to decide if you should do a flat rate on shipping for your Etsy shop or your website or whatever you're doing, I want you to think about how you shop. Have you ever been on a website and you fill up your cart and you're like, yes, I'm totally going to get this. And you know, you've got a hundred dollars worth of stuff in there. And then you get to the checkout page and they say, that's going to be 15 more dollars for shipping. And you go, er, do I really want this stuff? Really? It's going to cost $15 or $20 or $30 or whatever for shipping, it always makes me pause. And I always ask myself, do I really want this stuff? So I just do free shipping. The customer thinks it's free and not free. It's built into the price. I hope that makes sense. What size are these little loops? They're about five inches. I'm making them fast. So you have to learn as you go, you learn from doing, and if you don't do anything, you're not going to learn. That's what I have learned. And then I'll figure out how to do something and then I'm like, how the heck did I do that? That happens all the time. Creative Christine says she feels the same way you would do free shipping also. You're welcome for answering your question. So you just have to think about like what, how do you think? How do you shop? Because I do that all the time. I fill up that card and then when I go to check out, it's going to be 18 more dollars to ship. And I stop and I question myself every time, which is probably a good thing. I'm going to finish up this bow and I'm going to go check on the dogs because they are real quiet downstairs. I'm hoping they're asleep. Here's my zip tie. So this afternoon I have lots of orders to get out. That is a great point, Clarissa. She said she would rather believe, she would rather people believe that her product is worth an additional $15 than know you are paying $15 to ship it. That is a great, that's a good, that's a great point. Seriously, for real. It's perceived value, you know? They're like, wow, that's a really nice wreath because it costs $150. How do I determine the price on my wreaths? That's a really good question. I'm trying to think if I have enough time to answer it. The simple way that I do it is I make a list of everything that I have put into a wreath. Everything. The wreath. The ribbon. Um, the florals. The greenery. And I add everything up using the retail price, not the sales price, not the 50% off from Hobby Lobby. Sorry, only 40% off from Hobby Lobby. The retail sticker price. I add all of that up and then I times it by three. 
and that includes the shipping. But when I first started, I didn't know what the heck I was doing and my things were not very good, I only charged times two. Yes, Jess, you are correct. So I slowly worked my way up from timesing by two to timesing by three, okay? Because listen, when you first start out, you're not good. You're not. I mean, really, none of us are when we first start doing something. But we learn and we get better as we go. Okay, one more. One more. I can make these in my sleep, I think. Do you guys have any more questions about wreath making? I encourage you to go to the link in my profile and um, click on anything that you would like. There are so many things. There is a free bow making tutorial. There's a list of where I buy ribbons. There is a list of where I buy florals and greenery. There's my Amazon storefront. And just because you click over to Amazon, you don't have to buy stuff from it. I am a visual learner. I need to see what this is. So I always like to go and see what other people are using, especially when I first started out. I didn't know what in the world I was doing. So do I times the shipping by three, two? No, no. When I times my supplies by three, that leaves enough money in my price for shipping. I hope that says questions. I hope that answers your questions. <laughs> Clarissa says she enjoys my energy. I'm going to tell my children, you could sit here all day and listen to me. Go to the YouTube, girl. I got lots of stuff over there. All right. Make it a little bitty bow to go on top of this one. Then I gotta get work on all of these things. Oh my goodness. I usually can get four to five orders done in a day. It takes a long time to make wreaths, guys. I don't know if, how long it takes you to make a wreath. It takes me about 45 minutes to make a wreath, at least. Oh, Jess, you're so sweet. She says that she knows when I was a kindergarten teacher that my little people loved me. They did love me, and I loved them. They were so sweet. But when I realized the potential in my own business, like working solely, on my own business. Oh, I was like, man, I gotta give it a chance. So here I am, after giving it a chance. All right, last one. Guys, I have so appreciated each of you hanging out with me this morning. Fills up my day. Usually the dogs are in here up under my feet. But I have put them downstairs. How do you know how to price your bows? Well, you could um, look at your ribbon. This, this is a this is a 10 yard roll. Um, take the price, divide it by 10. That's how much you've got per yard. You could figure out how much ribbon you used in each one. That's too much math for me. I just did some research on Etsy and I figured out what other people were charging for it and I thought, okay, that sounds reasonable. And that's how I did it. Oh, Debbie, you get sad when I don't come on. That makes, that makes my heart happy. I was busy last week. Taking the dog to the vet, pick the dog up from the vet, vet, buying the college boys some groceries. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Next time I'm telling him he has a budget. 
and I'm gonna make him scan his stuff first to make sure he sticks to his budget. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm signing off. We did a lot this morning. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I'll make sure to get these cute, adorable things listed as soon as possible. But have a wonderful week. I will be back on again, hopefully on Thursday afternoon, if all goes well with the world and nothing crazy happens. I will be back on on Thursday afternoon, about 1, 1 1.30. Make sure to get on my email list so I can send out a message saying, hey, I'm going live. Have a great day. I will catch you guys next Monday for another Bow Making Monday. Bye, everyone.